Hey, what's up? This is AJ Amix, the creative entrepreneur, co-founder of A New Way to Market, and co-founder of the Passionpreneur Academy, where we help creative entrepreneurs like yourself share your divine talents and profit from your passions. With me this morning, I have Christina. And Christina is a running, surfing, and a cupcake fanatic. And I honestly can't <laughs> say that I've ever met a cupcake fanatic. I mean, I myself enjoy cupcakes, but I would not call myself a fanatic. But she has over 12 years of hands-on experience working with and marketing to the solo entrepreneur space. And she's a certified professional coach, and she's also the co-founder of Kickstart Kitchen. And that's a company where they specialize in showing women how to let go of the what-ifs, and then they're going to take that next step into profitable entrepreneurship. And they help them with do that with less stress and more clarity and have a strong support community. In Kickstart Kitchen, they offer two key programs. They have their Catalyst program and they have their Amp It Up program. And they help early entrepreneurs rock their businesses to the next level. And if you want to learn more about them and if you're a woman listening to this and you want to help somebody take you to the next space, I would highly recommend you just check out their website. Just go to www.kickstartkitchen.com. Again, that was kickstartkitchen.com. So, Christina, how is it going in sunny California A today? Oh, it's awesome. You know, it's kind of nice just being able to wake up. It's foggy mornings right now, so yeah. it's uh, it's a good time of year. You know, we go into that transition, but we definitely don't have to deal with all the stuff that the rest of the countries have to deal with. Right, right. Well, you know, like I'm in Texas, and they say if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. Wait you know? 15 minutes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to live in Dallas. Yes. Well, fantastic. So, I want to know what has your journey been? You know, what has your journey been to create what you're doing? Well, you know, uh, Jules and I, my partner, Jules, when we started Kickstart Kitchen, we both had our own businesses. Uh, she had a social media marketing business. I had a business coaching business. And we just kept trading hours for dollars. And we worked together in, uh, in the corporate world as well. And so we both had that kind of challenge. We'd come in, we were exhausted and we knew there had to be a better way, and we kind of started feeling each other out. And, you know, we both respect each other. We both have crazy, sometimes bordering, insane work ethic. Mm -hmm. And uh, we knew that it would be a good fit. And so we decided that we wanted to kind of work with the masses and more than one-on-one. -on -one, and we decided to pull in and, and take a chance together. So how did you make that transition from going in from the corporate world to actually being a certified professional coach and getting those clients and then starting Kickstart Kitchen? Yeah, you know, we uh, we joined groups right away. We okay. decided we needed some coaching. And so instead of just doing one on one coaching right away, we joined some larger groups where they were business startup groups or they were uh, collaboration networks, Facebook groups, places where we can ask a lot of questions, share ideas, share content, put out stuff to test early. So that was one of the key things that we did early on. And those were part of all online communities. Most of the businesses in there and the people in there were sharing their own online businesses. So we had a lot of resources to learn from. And, you know, we looked at who would be our competitors mm -hmm. and, you know, people sometimes are afraid of their competitors. We looked at what could we learn from them? What gaps could we fill? What things were they doing that we thought we might be able to do better or do a little differently? So, you know, we really used our competitors to kind of put ourselves in a little bit narrower niche. Yeah, well, you know, I don't see why anybody wouldn't do that. I mean, why reinvent the wheel and try to do this and try <laughs> right. to do that? And because the people that are already being successful and they're succeeding at what you want to do, I mean, they already have it figured out. Otherwise, they would not be being profitable, you know? <laughs> right. So we Saves you a lot of time and trouble. Yeah, so we can learn a whole lot. But the, also the cool thing, too, is that they're really not your competitors because only you have your own story. And even though that you have, like, you could be offering the exact same services as somebody else, and you guys got up on the same stage and shared the exact same story, there's going to be certain people that's going to work with you and certain people who's going to work with them just because different yeah. emotional resonances, different frequencies that are exuding from each other. You're absolutely right. I mean, it all comes down to your personal brand, especially on the online business when that comes through. So, yeah, you just kind of pick your own style. You, you pick what you focus in, and then you just rock that message out there. Yeah. And here's kind of a, just a random question since you just kind of uh, talked about personal brand. <laughs> so I know you're not, maybe not be prepared for this one, but I was asked the other day that if people wanted to make money in the online space, how important is it for them to have a personal brand and do they have to have one or can they come into the online space and kind of be under the radar and actually have a profitable business? You know, I think it kind of depends on what type of business they're going to put out there. If they have, I mean, we always try to think long term. If you think that you're going to create a product that eventually you want to sell your business, 
You definitely want to have your personality in there when you're interacting with customers, but you may not make your brand your name. You may not make it totally dependent on you because if you do, it's going to be hard to sell later on or hard to bring in investors, hard to bring in partners if the brand is all about you. Um, but I think you know, these days, people really want to connect with a personality. They want to feel a personal connection connection to a brand. So even if it's a product or if it's a service that you're selling, there's got to be some of you in the voice. Uh, you know, if you're somebody who likes to cuss and say the F word in your blog post, which sometimes we do, right. um, but you think you got to stick to prim and proper, you're not really doing yourself justice and you're probably not going to work with the kind of people that you want to work with. So I think being really good about knowing who are you? Who do you want to work with? Probably peeps just like you um, and making sure that you're putting that in your brand, even if it's not necessarily your name that is your brand or you are only your brand. Um, definitely putting it behind your products is critical. Awesome. So do you help these women kind of get into the internal game to figure out who they are before they start launching this, this these businesses? Yeah, yeah. We do go through a lot of the mindset of a business owner. Awesome. So we talk about you know, what's your why? Some of the basics. I mean, this stuff is not rocket science. Um, it's been out there, but people forget to look at why do I really want this? Not just the money, but what are the core reasons? Who do I want to work with? What are my real goals? Um, you know, we always start with that sort of foundation. It helps us not only figure out what they want, but it helps themselves figure out what they want. And then we can kind of make sure that they're moving in the right direction and not towards something that they're not going to love. Right. Well, another good thing about working with you guys is, is, like you said, the information is there. Everybody has information, but you guys get to serve as kind of this mirror to mirror back to the people. Otherwise, they're not going to hold themselves accountable or they may not be able to pull what's within them out as efficiently as you guys can. Absolutely. And they kind of people who work with us um, and who choose to work with us kind of know we're a no nonsense, no bullshit kind of group. So yeah. when you get in, it's going to be honesty. We're going to tell you if something doesn't sound right, if you don't sound like you have conviction or you're kind of sounding half on the fence with it, we're going to kind of call you to the carpet on it a little bit. So we really help push people and help challenge them and stretch them beyond that comfort zone. So they actually do get their business off the ground. Uh, you know, that's something that, that we provide and we're real open about. I love it. I love it. So, okay. So the presidential election's coming up, right? And people are saying the economy is a mess and it's going to slow down because we don't know who the candidate's going to be and what's going to happen. So do you think <laughs> that it really is a good time to create a business doing what you love? Absolutely. Um, one of the things that I've lived by for years, and, and this is in business goals and outside of business goals, is, you know, when you look back five years from now, when you look back a year from now, or even bigger, 20 years from now, what do you want to see? Do you want to say, oh, my gosh, it's been another year, another five years, and I still haven't done it? And think, oh, if I only would have started at that time, where could I be, even if I only put one hour, two hours into it uh, a week? And so I think you got to think about when you get to those goals and you see there's a lot of weight loss. Another year went by. This year I'm going to do it. If only I had done it last year. There's never a bad time to start a business. If you're passionate about it and you really, really want it, it doesn't matter what the economy is. You put yourself out there. You put your brand out there. You get really clear and you pick your little niche. You pick your little area and you rock it and you will find people who want to come play with you. It doesn't matter what the economy is like. Um, you, will, you will be able to find it. Yeah, I totally So definitely agree. start now. Yeah, <laughs> I totally wait. agree. Totally agree. Napoleon Hill talks about this idea of the person with the most enthusiasm wins. And so yes. I, I think if you can come into alignment with that passion as you're talking about, then you're going, like you said, you're going to find the clients, the clients is because they're, you're so freaking excited, you know? Yes. And that means that you won't stop. I don't want to say working, but because it doesn't really feel like work. I mean, we stay up sometimes till midnight brainstorming on new ideas, but it doesn't feel like work because we are so excited about it. If you don't have the passion and enthusiasm, it's probably going to feel like work. And I think that's what ends up stopping you is because you don't really want to do it. And it, it's a struggle to do it. So you don't want to innovate. You don't want to think creatively. Yeah. Well, I, I know, like, I, I'm, like, super nerd sometimes because I'll have, like, this <laughs> success. Like, if I'm running this campaign or something and, like, the video that's going right now and people are commenting, I'm, like, running through the house, like, dancing and screaming. It's just, like, me and the dog. And I'm, like, all right. And then I'll oh, back, yeah. You know? We dance to a little flow rider and Lady Gaga when we get excited. <laughs> <laughs> How funny. So, um, so why did you create Kickstart Kitchen? Um, really, again, just because we were doing our own businesses 
we wanted a way that we could partner together. Jules and I, um, we looked at our core values when we first started. We literally started this business overnight, uh, over a weekend. Our husbands were out of town and we said we went and had a couple glasses of wine. Probably not the best way to start a business, but um, we really have a lot of the same values. We wanted to have fun. And so we said that's a core element of our business is we have to be having fun. And we shared a lot of the pers same personality characteristics in our work, work ethic, in our values. Um, but we also had very complementary skills. So there are great things that I love about getting into the code and the website and uh, certain aspects of our business that I really love in the details. And then Jules has other aspects that she's incredibly good at. She's incredibly good at communicating and reaching out to people. So, you know, we had complementary skills and that really worked for us. So when we sat down and evaluated a partnership, we just said, oh my gosh, there's so many people that we could be helping. And we love this side of the business. And it was kind of a no brainer. It, it was very easy to fall into. Nice. So you got this partnership going. Um, for those people who are thinking about maybe if they don't want to start their own business, but maybe they would like to have a partnership, how do you guys split up the workload? How did that work for you guys? Good question. Uh, we look at, again, what our complementary skills are. What are what are things am I good at? What things is she good at? The communication is uh, a big thing. You know, we're blogging. We're doing interviews. We're reaching out and doing guest blogging. We're hosting tweet chats. So we pretty much kind of split that work 50-50. Okay. Uh, we do have, we finally got a, a, a virtual assistant to kind of help with some of the, the posting work and things like that. But we really do split it up um all the writing and all the, the community building, mm -hmm. we split up 50-50 because we really want both of us to be a very visible part of the brand. But the back-end work, we really look at what our strengths are and we divide the work that way. And that feels really good because then something that I am not good at and don't like to do, I don't have to deal with. And Jules feels the same way. We both continually say, I'm so glad I have a partner because I don't want to deal with that. And I love that. You love that. And that's awesome. I don't have to deal with that. But yeah. we also check each other too. You know, we... If we are going idea crazy, one of us is there to say, wait a second, uh, hold off. Does that fit what we're doing over here? We're getting a little too excited. So we're, we're going to check some balances. Awesome. And if there's one cupcake laugh, is it like a battle royale or you guys just put that down the middle? <laughs> we're very pleasant with each other in splitting it. Um, okay. We're both runners and Jules is an incredible cupcake fanatic too. I don't think she's ever met a cupcake she didn't like, which is why we run so much so that we can run that off. But sprinkles are our favorite. So we're, we're pretty sweet to each other about bringing two. Okay. Awesome. So when, when you guys created this business overnight over some glasses of wine, what <laughs> worked and what did not work kind of in this journey? You know, the, the, core things that really work for us are communities, Facebook communities, our book club community. Um, we have you know almost 140 members in our book club, and that's a free community. But the value that we put in there and the value of the women um, that are in there that they get from each other fostering that, that has been huge for growth in our business. Facebook groups, all kinds of uh, niche-specific Facebook groups. Sometimes there's one on business budgeting. Sometimes we're part of ones that are uh, more on just sharing their social media shares for people to share content. I, we actually invest in ones that we pay for. Um, there's just a little skin in the game. I think people take it a little more seriously. So participating in Facebook groups, events, tweet chats are huge for us. We get a lot of community participation. You get to know about somebody really quickly in an hour mm -hmm. and get some good nuggets from them. And there's all kinds of collaboration opportunities in there. So the communities is big. Um, the events big partnering and the collaboration with, uh, we partnered with YFE on several things. We're doing events with them, um, which is Young Female Entrepreneurs Organization. And so that collaboration aspect has been really big as well. Uh, and I think the last thing that works really well for us is asking a lot of questions. We're constantly reevaluating. We track everything mm -hmm. and we ask questions of ourselves, but we ask questions of our mentors, our communities and, and our audience, our customers and clients. Very good. And are you using social media to kind of ask your questions to your audience or what are, what are ways that you're doing that? Yeah, we do. We post questions in the different private forums and okay. Facebook groups that we're in. We ask questions of the, the communities like our Facebook groups, um, sometimes even on just out there on Twitter and Facebook. We ask more general questions about our industry. Sometimes people are more easy to respond to you if you're asking a general question about the industry and not necessarily about you because, you know, they might be getting their feet wet with us. And so... You know, they don't want to hurt our feelings or they don't want that out there in space. So it's easier to ask questions about what they're looking for in the industry, what their needs are in their specific niche. 
um, for their business and they're much more readily answer, uh, will answer those questions. Awesome. And so what did not work? Uh, uh, random contests and promotions <laughs> did not work for us. Okay. okay. Uh, and I think, you know, not getting a, a private mentor early, that was probably one of the things that maybe slowed our growth a little bit early on. Had we got a private mentor a little bit early, earlier in the game, it might have been a, a better thing for us. Um, you know, we launched and learned quickly. We would come up with product ideas, launch them within a week, uh, very robust product ideas. Mm -hmm. That was critical for us in getting a lot of feedback and learning how to tweak things. We're very much launch, figure it out, get the basic minimum viable product out there. And, uh, you know, maybe the mentor would have helped us in saying, wait two more weeks and you would have had an even better value out of that. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you on that. Um, in hindsight, looking back on kind of my journey, I totally, totally wish I would have hired a private mentor way, way sooner because it, <laughs> it, it really does make a huge difference. It really does. It does. And finding one that's going to push you, yeah. but also has a great personality that meshes with you. Oh, it's important. It's vital, completely vital. So um, what advice would you give to a creative entrepreneur who's like just starting out and they want to share their divine talent? What advice would you give them to do so? Connect early and often. Look at all the groups that are tied to your industry, whether it's on Twitter whether it's on, uh, or tweet chats, whether it's on Facebook, private groups, um, communities like Young Female Entrepreneurs Organization. Uh, those communities that, that you're involved in with your business or that your audience is involved in, Join those communities early, interact with them, and reach out to people. One of the greatest things that we do in our collaboration efforts is we don't always know that we're going to want to work with somebody right away, but we do one-on-one -on -one interviews. We do Skype calls and Google Hangout chats, even if it's 20 minutes. Right. And we, say, we just want to talk and get to know you. So reach out to people early. Don't try to do it alone. Join those communities where you can really get feedback and feel like you're not doing this by yourself. And you don't learn everything the hard way. You you learn from other people's mistakes and wins. Right. So what I hear you saying is that you should build relationships and it's not try to sell, sell people up front first. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> building is key. And it's not just with people for your customers, but people you want to partner with down the road or do projects with. Those relationships are just as important and valuable as your client relationships. Because yeah, they're going to be people that recommend you and, and give you extra project ideas, maybe share in a collaboration opportunity where you both benefit by generating revenue or increasing your audience. So Yeah, I totally agree with you on that. So how important is it for somebody to basically put time into marketing themselves and learning how they have to market themselves? Do that before you start. <laughs> It's not super hard to change early on, but look, you don't want to confuse your, your audience and you want to know how to find your audience. If you're not clear about what your brand is, if you're not clear, if you, you know, the middle finger project, is that your style? Uh -huh. <laughs> Are you more of an accountant style? If you're not clear about your own brand, number one, people aren't going to know what you stand for. The worst thing is that they could lump you with some other business style or some other type of business that you don't want to be lumped with. And they just assume, oh, you're just like them. Uh, you want to stand out. So find the things that you are incredibly good at and find the things that you really love to talk about and you're passionate about. Focus in on those things so that not only people understand who you are, but you know where to go find those people, you know, thinking about where they're playing, where they're communicating. So would you suggest somebody kind of invest into some type of marketing uh, programs or products to kind of learn the basic skills and then take that information and then just implement it? Yeah, I think that's really valuable. You know, as a new entrepreneur, um, what's great right now is you don't have to spend a lot of money to get started. There's lots of information out there. There's lots of people to learn from. I think there's a lot of great free work resources, but, you know, you're kind of doing it yourself. And it's not realistic to think that you can learn how to do everything. And I think we, weaknesses for people in a lot of areas is, is marketing. And so if that's a weakness and that's something that you really need to nail early on and just even need some feedback, I definitely encourage people in hiring somebody, even if it's just for a few months, to get yourself clear about who you want to be, how you want to present yourself. Yeah, I agree. And I also think another thing that holds a lot of people back is they think they have to learn how to master Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and YouTube and how do I build a website and how do I, you know, I, they just like, they absorb all of this content, but then they, they just get overwhelmed and they're, they're like, I can't learn all this. I can't do all of it. So right. I always tell people that they should just pick like one thing and then, and then just try it. 
until it's, you know, if it's working for you, then continue to get really good at it. And then pick up another tool if you need to. But don't think that you have to go by the, like, to Home Depot and buy every single tool that they offer and think that you have to go out and build this house, like, tomorrow. Just go and grab a hammer and just start hitting a nail into a two-by-four until you get it all the way in there. Then maybe you pick up the saw and saw it off to the length that it needs to be or something of that nature. And that actually was a backwards way of building something, knowing it before you cut it. But it doesn't matter. (laughs) <laughs> it's such good advice, though, because I think people will just say, well, so-and-so is on Twitter. I got to be on Twitter. Or so-and-so is on Pinterest. I got to be there. You're right. Pick the one or two that fit your business, that mm-hmm. fit who your audience is. Don't just go do something and think you got to do all of them just because everybody else is there. So, so definitely good to get started. Otherwise, I mean, you've probably seen this in clients that you've worked with. You get three, four, five months into it, you haven't made a dollar and you're still trying to figure all, out all the fundamentals. You're still trying to think, oh my gosh, I need to learn this and this. And you still haven't made a dollar or have no idea how you're going to do that. Yeah, you're exactly right. So if you had to start all over again, what would you do differently? Uh, mentor early on, private mentor, definitely. Yeah. Uh, joining, We joined communities early, but I would say we definitely join more and a little more specific. We joined some broad communities earlier on and kind of focused in there and played in there. Um, but now that we are kind of joining into more specific communities, Facebook groups, organizations, that part is definitely benefiting us. So if we would have kind of done that early on, I think we would have had a little better um, audience growth uh, right now. Awesome. So definitely doing doing that a little earlier on in the private mentor earlier on and do that differently. And, you know, tracking uh, we tracked some things, but we didn't track as diligently when we first started as we do now. And I think that's critical planning and strategy, backing your budget out from everything you think you're going to launch in the next year, everything you think you're going to spend, planning for taxes, all that stuff, backing out your budget for what you're going to actually produce in your business. Um, that has really been a critical thing. And, you know, first couple months, we didn't really do a lot of that. Certainly. Yeah, that's that's great advice. And even talking about like your, your accounting, even looking at that and planning that out correctly. I mean, that's most entrepreneurs. We look we look we just completely overlook that so many times. <laughs> yeah, I don't know a lot of entrepreneurs that really love dealing with accounting and taxes and business expenses. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't. That's why I just hire an accountant to take care of it. because <laughs> I don't want to do it. Right. <laughs> So we, early on in the program, we talked about two of, you, two of the things that you guys have. You have your, your Catalyst, and then you have the Amp It Up. Um, what are those programs, and where can people go to learn more about that? Uh, they can go to kickstartkitchen.com. Okay. Now, we have Amp It Up as the private coaching. You can join in that anytime. We've got several different packages, and you know we, give a, we have a Spark Pack that allows people to test the waters a little bit, okay. see if they like working with us, and we like working with them, and then they can decide if they want to move forward. And that's really for somebody who is – saying, I kind of have a little bit of a plan. I know that I need to get off the ground, but I need to push and I need somebody to privately give me a lot of attention right now to help me get that real big thrust out of the way. Um, the Catalyst program is something that we run several times a year. The next one's in January. Okay. So it's more of a group program. You get peak performance partners, which are awesome. They're so critical in your business, having somebody you can bounce ideas off of. So you get us, you get your peak performance partners. It's a great group. And the next one starts in January. So for your audience, anybody that signs up on the pre-list at kickstartkitchen.com forward slash Catalyst, we will give them $20 off. Uh, the the sign up for Catalyst in January if they decide to move forward in that. So just getting on the list, they'll get that coupon. Awesome. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, Christina, thank you so, so much for spending your morning with us. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been great. You're welcome. Well, until then, be passionate, be profitable.